my mom's death went from being the worst thing that ever happened to me to the best. She showered me until I was 17. That was really, really toxic. <laughs> Hello, how's it going everybody? Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, hello, my name is Cam. And if you're not new and you keep coming back again and again, thank you. I really appreciate you. Today's video is brought to you by my lovely Patreon supporters. Thank you so much. I actually have a goal to reach 20 patrons by the end of 2022. So if you'd like to help me out with that target, if you want extra content, or if you just want to support my channel in general, there's a link in the description below. And with that, let's get into the video. Jeanette McCurdy is a former actress who played the character Sam on iCarly, a show on Nickelodeon about 15 years ago, I think it started. A couple of days ago, Jeanette came out with her first ever book, a memoir called I'm Glad My Mom died in which she goes in detail to explain how her mom was abused to her both from a financial perspective but also she was abused to her physically and emotionally my family was struggling from you know the day i was born and then even before that my father had two jobs he worked at home depot and hollywood video and my mom would pick up shifts at target for the holidays to try and give us some sort of gifts uh, my grandfather and grandmother lived with us to try and help make ends meet and it was always a struggle. So my mom put me in acting when I was six to kind of try and help to, to bring in some additional income. I haven't yet read the book, but I wanted to talk about this because I have so many thoughts. I'm actually trying out this new format of videos where I'm just doing some reflections. So I hope you enjoy this format. This is more just like unscripted, unedited. Well, there'll be a little bit of editing, but not like anything heavy. I wanted to just kind of walk you through my thought process when it comes to why I think this situation with Jeanette McCurdy will be replicated in the future by children who grew up in families that are vlogging on the internet, specifically YouTube. It is extremely likely that the kids of family vloggers will grow up and start to speak out about their experiences growing up with parents constantly filming them, filming their intimate moments, for example, when they had a period or something like that, things that shouldn't be broadcast to millions of people. And Jeanette speaking out about the way that she was raised and the, the way that her mother forced her to be an actress when she didn't actually want to be an actress, I hope inspires other family vloggers' children to come out with their stories and step away from that if that's what they want to do. Deborah McCurdy, Jeanette's mom, wanted to be an actress but her family didn't support that dream so she never actually managed to become an actress to act in anything and when she had a child when she had Jeanette she actually used Jeanette to live vicariously through her she enrolled Jeanette with managers that um, work with child actors and started her on a career path of being famous and an actress at the age of six years old now, this is such early times in childhood and Jeanette was highly aware of her family's difficulties financially. Turns out that she was the only one supporting her family by the age of like 11. So when it comes to that, I don't even want to imagine the burden, the responsibility that just fell on her soul and how she basically felt like she had no choice but to do it. It was very much my mom sitting me down and, you know, saying in a in as kid friendly of a way as I guess she could manage that this would be something useful and helpful and that she thought that I could do it and would be good at it, which was wild to me because I was very shy and, and, you know, very socially anxious. So it seemed like the worst possible fit to like go into rooms and you know, be all presentational and performative. That did not sound, <laughs> that didn't sound uh, quite right. In addition to this, her mother's manipulation, telling her that she was a great actress, telling her that she was not that good at writing, for example, which was what she actually wanted to do, not validating or asking her what she actually wants to do and just pushing her to do what the mother wanted to do and that she never got to do, is actually um, reminiscent family vloggers' children who actually don't have any choice on whether or not they can do that. While Jeanette was six years old and working as a child in Hollywood, she was, however, protected by a union and laws that are in place for these uh, industries, the television industry, the film industry, any kind of entertainment that has labor from children does have a lot of laws set in place that are meant to protect the child. They don't actually go as far as really properly protecting them. For example, on the financial side, Janet talked about how her mother was the one managing her money and um, she actually was only meant to put aside 15% of her income 
in a different account that Jeanette would be able to access at the age of 18. Typically you have like an agent and or a manager. The agent and the manager each take between 10 and 20%, just kind of like depending on who you wind up with. There are a lot of agencies that do like really astronomical startup fees. Mm -hmm. That is a scam. So that sh nobody should be doing that. That's not a good sign. Um, and then your attorney takes 5%. Uh, so off the top, you know, a significant chunk is already kind of, kind of gone. And then for me, I was, you know, I paid my mom a salary, which was her sort of, you know, just for taking me to and from auditions. And that's what she, what she, uh, what she told to me was a salary, but I, I, you know, suspect there was kind of more to it than, than just whatever a, a, an appropriate salary may have been. Uh, and then there's 15% that by the union is set aside for the child performer to, nobody can touch it until they're 18 and then the child performer has access to 15% of their money, which is, that sounds crazy to me. Mm. That, that is really the only amount of your money that's 100% protected. And also given to you in a lump sum at age 18, like, why don't you just go ahead and buy the alcohol for them and like the drugs and like the clothes and whatever a dumb 18 year old is gonna buy if they're handed a lump sum. When it comes to family vloggers, nothing of the sort exists. The only protections that are in place for children is when you have to tick this box on YouTube saying that your video is made for children or it isn't. And that's as far as YouTube has gone when it comes to child protection laws. When it comes to family vloggers though, they don't have to put aside any money for the children working. Like, I'm, I don't know why I put air quotes there. There's no, there's no need for them. They're actually working, they're laboring. Not only is there no law set in place that says that this family needs to put money aside for the children for when they grow up, but also there's no laws in place that um, indicate, that guide at least how many hours a, a day this child can work because as you can imagine, children don't have the same capacity for work as adults. I think there's a lot to do when it comes to YouTube in that area. And I think it's really, really worrisome that nothing has been done to this point. My mom was the master of finding justifications for the things that she wanted to be a certain way. For example, like it was really shunned on in the church when I played a child prostitute. Like, no, Sister Huffmeyer wasn't having it. But my mom would come to church and like have this testimony speech written where she would then go stand up on the stage and talk about how like this is actually a really good thing for the church because it might lead to prosit hearing the whisper of the Holy Ghost. If they see this and they know that Jeanette's Mormon, like they might convert as well. That was the level of like wow. extreme that my mom would take it. And somehow, like looking back on it now, it seems ridiculous and absurd and over the top. But at the time she would somehow like persuade people that that was reality and that that was a good thing. Like she had a really charming kind of side to her personality. Jeanette also talks about how her mother was Mormon and she had this like grip on her and not just on her, she had the charm, she was intelligent. Now this clip and everything else that Jeanette has talked about has made me think that her mother has all these like narcissistic traits that everyone keeps talking about on TikTok and YouTube and everywhere in the last like year or two. So many things like the love bombing phase, the, you know, the fact that she was constantly abused her but like gaslighting her at the same time telling her that's okay and that's normal for example her mother showered her until the age of 17. Mm. Anytime that I try to even assert so much as this is a very very uh uncomfortable fact but she showered me until I was 17 and anytime I would try and assert I would like to shower myself I would be so nervous I'd say you know I think I got it like I think I know that she would always say well I'm I used to be a hairdresser so I know the shampoo and conditioner routine better than you could possibly know and I'd be like I've been studying like I think I know it really well and it'd just be complete chaos and hysterics boundaries were not possible with her. Jeanette has spoken about a lot of things that she was not comfortable with that her mother would keep doing and tell her that that was okay, that was normal, etc. This was reminiscent of a video that I saw a while ago. I think it was from the family eight passengers where the mother actually filmed her daughter's first menstruation. Well, like not the actual menstruation, but like the moment that this happened. And the daughter was really uncomfortable and asking her not to do it, but she didn't care. She found that to be an amusing moment. My apologies, this time it wasn't actually eight passengers. This time it was the Tannerite family. It's Yanni's vlogs that the channel is called. Jeanette's relationship with religion has been very complicated over the years and she still hasn't yet quite 
made up her mind on it. Another piece of overlap between Jeanette's story and general family vlogging channels is the Mormon aspect. Jeanette comes from a Mormon family and she has talked at length about what it was like growing up as a Mormon and most of, I don't know if most of them, but lots of the family vlogging channels on YouTube are actually Mormon. And she has talked about how she had OCD as a child and she talked about how these religious rituals that she was doing heightened her OCD and her grandfather noticed that she might have had OCD asked her mom to take her to a doctor, but her mom's response was, no, she's fine, she doesn't have OCD, my daughter's fine. This following story was also extremely impactful, in my opinion. In her late teens, when Jeanette was a little bit more curvy, and she was on a, a holiday with her boyfriend at the time that her mother didn't know about, paparazzi essentially found her and took pictures of her. Her mother didn't have the appropriate reaction to that, that a normal mother who loves her child did have. I think it's very obvious from a story like this just how much control her mother Deborah wanted to have over her. She ended up sending Jeanette a bunch of emails calling her a little st and an ugly monster and she even went as far as attempting to sabotage her career, posting menacing letters on fan club pages in an attempt to get her fans to turn on her. And then she asked Jeanette for money to pay to fix the family refrigerator. And I hate that I have to go back to eight passengers. I mean, I wish they didn't do any of the things that they do, but this story is reminiscent to another eight passenger story. The family sent their son to a camp. I didn't do a good job explaining this in front of the camera, so editing camp to the rescue. <laughs> Chad, the eight passengers teenager, was sent to a behavioral correctional camp. Um, some people have speculated that this might have been a little more dark than just the summer camp, but he was still sent to camp and when he returned he played the prank on his little brother and as a result he ended up sleeping on a beanbag for eight months. Keep in mind the eight passengers family are extremely rich, they have a huge mansion. YouTube family denies child abuse after son slept on beanbag for seven months. YouTubers Kevin and Ruby Frank have denied allegations of child abuse after it was revealed that their son had slept on a beanbag for seven months. The vloggers who have 2.4 million subscribers on their channel 8 Passengers became the target of abuse allegations following a now deleted video in which their teenage son, Chad, explained that he had his room taken away. The 15 year old said, my bedroom was taken away for seven months, I was sleeping on a beanbag since October. This came after Chad played a number of pranks on his 8 year old brother Russell and after getting advice from a therapist, the Franks told Chad that he shouldn't stay in his shared room with his brother while another bedroom in their house was getting renovated. The couple claimed that they gave Chad the option to sleep on a pull-out guest bed, an inflatable mattress or somewhere else in the house. Chad chose the beanbag because it was the most comfortable. Kevin told Insider that the video titled What We Haven't Told You showed Chad's victory over the challenges that he's faced over the last several years after physical and emotional damaging behavior. The family was also criticized for an older video in which Ruby refused to drive to her six-year-old daughter Eve's school after she forgot her packed lunch, which she is responsible for bringing to school. Recalling a teacher asking her to make the 45-minute drive to bring her lunch, Ruby said, I responded and said Eve is responsible for making her own lunches in the morning, so the natural outcome is she just going to be hungry, and hopefully nobody gives her food and nobody step in and gives her lunch. The girl was six years old. There was even a change.org petition that was set up to send child protection services to the Frankie house in Utah with Division of Child and Family Services visiting the home. When it comes to family vloggers, it's so incredibly crazy to me because these kids are actually working so much and they don't even know it. Unlike Jeanette, at least in this case with child actors working in the industry, there's a union and they're aware that they're on a contract and that they're working and that they're getting paid and so on. These child vloggers probably don't even know what's happening. Their mom keeps pulling out the camera, keeps filming them all the time. They are born with this. Oftentimes with family vlogging channels, um, they have started to document the journey since uh, the person got pregnant. So uh, there will be like months and months and months of content in advance before they even 
are born in the content stars there with so many, so many family vloggers posting content with their babies. And if we're talking about people who actually don't want to get pregnant and they decide to go the adoption route, we had the situation with Micah Stauffer who actually adopted a child for the whole process to post that on YouTube and grow her channel, which actually grew exponentially during that time. Once the child was adopted, she even had this business essentially that was set in place, which had a picture of the child uh, turned backwards and you could pay to turn one of the puzzle pieces so that you could, by the time they would get to $5,000, I think it was, you could see the, the face of the child. And people actually paid for that. All of this happened and so much money was made on the back of Huxley and it all ended with uh, Micah and James Stoffer returning the child because they didn't want him anymore. The child was not as agreeable as they would have liked and he was crying. They couldn't actually make like a lovely family vlogging content with him once he became a toddler. There is so much overlap between child stardom and family vloggers. And I think we're gonna end up seeing more and more of these kids come out with their stories as they grow up. And I really hope that they do because I think that the more they do, the more other children will be inspired to also, you know, kind of put their foot down when they want to and hopefully something comes of it and more laws are put in place because I think that YouTube really just needs to get its shit together for this stuff. They need to make it so that it's more safe for children on the internet and they need to make it so that these children are paid for their labor. That's that. This is my reflection and I hope you enjoyed this style of content. Let me know what you think. If you like this style, I would make more content like this. And yeah, that's it for now. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like this video if you like it. Thank you to my patrons as always. Don't forget to check out my Patreon if you'd like to support me and help me get to my target of 20 patrons. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye!